It's Destination Alaska. As the crew of Star Princess face the challenge of taking five-star luxury to one of the world's last frontiers. Wow, it's like a dream suite. With two and a half thousand passengers demanding a unique experience. There we go, and there you see the whale. Oh. Captain and crew must go the extra mile. Oh, yes, sir. Fresh glacier water. Yes. Battling the navigational challenges of an extreme environment. This has to position, Steve. 50 meters, 5 0. I'm not going to make it. And the unpredictable weather to deliver the promise of a wilderness like nowhere else on Earth. Oh. This time, one late passenger pushes the captain's patience a step too far. She doesn't park the car. So she hasn't parked the car yet? I'm by The ship has a soggy setback. OMG. As the crew battles with a leak. See, we have a problem. I'm ready. And Timothy faces a fishy problem. Here, fishy, fishy. Hey. Early morning in the Canadian port of Vancouver. And before Star Princess sets off for the wilds of Alaska, she needs to stock up on provisions. There are another seven pallets coming off that truck right at the end, won't I? Where they're going is so remote, food and beverage manager Janice needs to check in enough supplies for three and a half thousand people. Here's it all action. To last them until they return here in two weeks. Checked off some of the alcohol, important delivery. <laughs> This is all shrimp here. Nothing can be left behind, and she's working against the clock. Got to have everything on by 3.30. If we don't, I think it costs about another $50,000 uh, an hour. You're going in here? Yes. Where are you going? On board, Janice's boss, food and beverage director Roy, marshals the stock. It's like chess. You have to move everything around so it all fits in. He runs a tight ship. And now he's ramping up the pressure on Janice. I'd really like to see if we can get everything on by 2.30. Oh, my God. Right now, at this minute, I am overwhelmed. While Janice tries to meet her new deadline... Babushka, aloha. Hey, you're right. Upstairs, there's a new hotel general manager in charge. Peter is getting a final handover from the current manager, Tim. Make sure there's no soap residue, any splashes in, in the showers. Yep. It's their job to make sure over 1,200 cabins are ready for the passengers about to come on board. I don't think there's a normal hotel ashore would ever turn around 100% of its occupancy in a day. With even the cheapest cabin costing £1,300 a week, guests will be expecting the best. I see they do the blankets on the balconies. That's standard for all that, the, that's what, for the that's, Alaska season. Yeah, for the Alaska season. For Peter, the stakes are high. This will be the first time he's held the top job. Well, I've always had my eye on the hotel manager position. The pager? Just over 15 years later, and it happened. And that's your elevator key. It's all yours. And now he's got the big job, he gets the big responsibilities. Very excited to be here, but nervous. Packed for the Alaskan summer, where temperatures can drop below 10 degrees Celsius, Two and a half thousand guests begin to arrive. As the frantic last minute preparations continue below, on deck, passengers are enjoying a prime view of the Vancouver skyline and basking in the late August sun while it lasts. Hello. Back for his 14th summer cruising Alaska, Italian Captain Tuvo has made this route his own. You know, normally people take a bit longer to find the ice cream plane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll be done the first day. Yeah. Welcome on board. Thank you. Thank you. There's Hello. one thing that separates this special cruise from all others. To me, the best part is to be able to see the, the expression of the face of the passenger when they get to see the nature. If it's a whale or if it's a glacier, the nature up in Alaska is unbelievable. Janice's deadline is half an hour away. 
but some stock is missing in action. This has not come yet. Maybe they put it on a different ship. Oh, nightmare. Olive oil. Oh, oh. Pork tenderloin. <laughs> Smoked salmon. Oh. I don't remember seeing none of this. Without these vital ingredients, the chef can't deliver his menu. If it's not here, then it could delay the ship. Most of the passengers are now also on board, including the Howards, who have already flown over 2,000 miles from Florida for the experience. Going into the glaciers. Awesome. That's what I really want to see. Yeah. And for their once-in-a-lifetime trip, they're splashing out. It's called the Grand Suite, and it, I have no idea what to expect. We could take the elevator up. In search of their room, the Howards could wander almost two miles of corridors. There you go, aft to the right. Somewhere amongst nearly 1,300 cabins is the Grand Suite. Oh, OK, I went on the wrong side. Because we'll go down here to the lift and come across that way. It's the most expensive on board, costing over £6,000 a week. There you go. Wow, check this out. Gorgeous. <laughs> this is not a small bathroom. Look at this thing. It's like a dream suite. I don't think that's for us. While the Howards settle in, back on the dock, it's good news for Janice. Misunderstanding of paperwork there, and uh, the items are actually on board. <laughs> there are just eight minutes till departure. With everything ready, there's a last-minute glitch. A passenger is running late. Any update on my passenger that's supposed to arrive? She still hasn't parked the car. I will then call the captain and see what he wants to do. So she hasn't parked the car yet? If she doesn't arrive soon, Captain Tuvo may have no choice but to leave without her. Update is we have no idea where this woman is, so if you guys are happy, we go. You're putting pressure on me. Could you? Captain Tuvo must decide whether to hold up the entire ship and risk a hefty fine or leave the latecomer in Vancouver. Steve. Engine and thruster, please. 20 minutes behind schedule, he gives the order to set sail. Hello. With one less passenger. It's not nice and it's not easy. Unfortunately, I have to make the call. Star Princess, a 17-story floating hotel, finally begins her voyage. That will crisp be dead. Four months But barely out of the docks, there's Vancouver's Lionsgate Bridge to contend with. Stadium 10. We have approximately 14 feet of clearance. Five meters should be between the funnel yes. and the bridge. We have to go and go through. And then, ha! Ah, 10 knots. That's reducing that. 10 knots. Speed is okay. Yeah, finger cross. See, you hold your breath and you go through. Captain Tuvo will take Star Princess north towards Alaska's Inside Passage. The voyage promises spectacular scenery and world famous glaciers. Oh, yeah, but I didn't know. Over at shore excursions, queues are already forming. But there's a familiar face on hand to help. Can I help you? Shore excursions agent Timothy has traded in warmer waters for the more unusual attractions of Alaska. Let me check. I have no idea. Sorry. <laughs> Why does it cost more? There are 150 excursions on offer on the Alaskan cruise. And Timothy's going to have to get up to speed with them if he's to keep the confidence of his passengers. I just had a question about the hunting halibut. Hunting halibut? I have no idea. The tour is my problem right now, so I don't know a lot of the tours that we do. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy is already making quite an impression on his colleagues. <laughs> 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 
But it's very annoying. I will be more than happy if he can work in the last station, so a little bit more far away from here. To help Timothy knowledgeably serve his passengers, his boss, Nico, has a plan. Do you know how the tour runs? Which one? The salmon fishing. No. No? Tell me. Tomorrow, I want you to go on tour and learn everything about the tour. But Timothy will have company. His new colleague, Karen. So you two are going? Oh, I'll see you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. As Star Princess pushes north, the temperature drops 10 degrees. We're heading over to the Alaskan waters from Vancouver. It's a wee bit rocky today, like, trying to hold on like this. <laughs> and when the rain clears, the passengers get their first glimpse of what lies ahead. Greetings, greetings, everyone. The ship gears up for dinner service. Hello, greetings. And food and beverage manager Janice does her rounds, checking all is well. Yeah, all good, yeah. Every day, the ship's five galleys serve 7,000 meals and produce 6,000 cakes and pastries. This is my favourite place. I love coming in here. <laughs> it's very hot, huh? But in a crew-only area, away from the sweet treats, Janice spots something amiss. It smells weird in here. Oh, hello. OMG. See, we have a problem. The leak has set off alarm bells. Janice has called in both her boss, Roy, and new hotel general manager, Peter. The suspicion is that an old problem has returned. Uh, we had a leak behind a bulkhead over there that leaked out onto the carpet going into the restaurant. Look at the state of this. OK. Where was the leak coming from? We're still investigating it. If the leak gets worse, it could put passenger areas out of action. So Roy is taking control. OK, we're going to take up the carpet, we're going to break the cement. Yeah. We're going to go back to the, the, metal. Yeah. the metal, OK? Then we're going to leave it a couple of days to see if there's yes. any, anything up there. That's what I need. OK. Drilling out the floor will disturb the guests. But tomorrow they'll be in port, and so while the passengers go ashore, the team will seize their chance. On his way back to his office, Hotel General Manager Peter spots something unexpectedly risque in the International Cafe. I see carrot cake that looks inappropriate. Orange penises with green testicles on the carrot cake. The carrot cake should have the little... <laughs> Peter calls for food and beverage director Goran to restore modesty to the display. Just have a look at the carrot cake um, when you have a second. Have a look at the carrots on top of the carrot cake. Top of the mountain. <laughs> we'll get it fixed. The ship's covered 600 miles and is nearing her first stop. Ketchikan, the gateway to Alaska's west coast. Steering a 109,000-ton ship between fjords takes a confident driver. We arrived this way and we have to do a swing at a park. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. <laughs> 10,000 people live in Ketchikan, where salmon fishing is the main business. This is your captain speaking to you from the bridge. Believe it or not, we managed to find Ketchikan. As Shore Excursions agent, it's Timothy's job to know all the trips on offer. So he's getting some hands-on experience on one of the most popular tours. A 160-pound, half-day fishing trip in a skippered boat. I'm going fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Karen wastes no time in giving Timothy some feedback. I would say that you start to speak too loud and you scare the fish and that was the issue. Easy. Easy. I'll be very quiet. I'll be like this. Yeah. Your fishing rod. Take that rod butt, put it in your hip. If you let that rod go slack, you lose your fish. Okay. Now all we have to do is watch him. Wait for a bite. I'm ready. Uh. 
while Timothy has to learn silence and patience, for head of maintenance, Raoul, speed is of the essence. Before the passengers return to the ship, he has to take up the floor and deal with the leak. I need to hurry up. Can you imagine some yours in your cabin and somebody's hammering you? The gas is not going to be happening. Just like I told you, any help? Out in the bay, things are less tense. On the salmon fishing tour, Karen's got a bite. I'm doing it the right way. You're going the right way. You do what you're doing. It's gone. It's gone? Oh, no. <laughs> I would say it'd be her fault, but she's very upset, so I don't want to upset her anymore. So let's just say that some fishies come and some fishies go. But there's a consolation waiting for Karen. Whales, right there. What? Where, where, where? Right there's a humpback. You see that ripple in the water? Yeah, right there. Yep, that's a humpback. Right oh, there. there he is. Oh, my God. Oh, so oh, beautiful. Wow. First time since yeah. you've seen this whale. Yes, yes, yes. As evening approaches, and with passengers back aboard, Star Princess forges north into colder waters towards the glacier fields. Yes, everybody. <laughs> With the miles passing beneath them, the guests relax, entertained by the 500 restaurant and bar staff and 50 theatrical crew. It's morning on the shore excursions desk, and with all the facts at his disposal, Timothy's sales are now soaring. I sold almost 11,000. Bam! Pretty good, eh? Oh, my God! <laughs> and Karen's getting onto Timothy's wavelength. You're amazing. Leaving the train! <laughs> Ice-covered mountains pull passengers out on deck. Star Princess is nearing the glacier field, and the glacier they all came to see. A very good morning to you all, ladies and gentlemen. In an hour, we'll get to see the face of the glacier. Enjoy. Bye-bye. I still love it like they want. It's still a magic place. To new friends and to a wonderful cruise. On deck 11 in the Grand Suite, the Howards have invited some fellow guests to enjoy the views from their front row seat. But new hotel general manager Peter... I'm on my way. ..is too busy to take in the sights. Morning. Morning, how are you? Janice has some bad news for him. Ah. There is still a There's leak. There's still a leak. Do we know what caused the leak? No. I would say it could be a leak in the drain. drain. Or it could be a leak in the bulkhead if there's any piping. Like here, maybe? Yeah. For now, they'll cap the water pipe to the area affected. And further investigations will be carried out once the cruise is over. But there's a small victory for Peter in the International Cafe. The carrots are gone. It's now chocolate swirls. Looks good. <laughs> Now, almost half a mile from the gigantic Hubbard Glacier, Captain Tuvo steers closer to give his passengers an unforgettable view. Y'all come out here and see this. The Hubbard Glacier is 76 miles long and over six miles wide. Oh, look how blue it is. It's just beautiful. Slowly, slowly reducing reps. Slowly, slowly. Start for five. A specialist pilot who is expert in these waters and their dangers is on hand to assist Captain Tuvo. Half a mile, as close as we want to get, there are things called shooters where the ice comes up from the bottom next to the face, so we stay away from the face. They have to trade off the balance between giving passengers the best possible views... Slowing down all the time. OK. ..against the risk to the ship of being too close. Shoot, there are pieces of ice that come from underneath, like a champagne cork, if they need the boat propeller. That's it, you're not going to go anywhere. Wow. It's just awesome. It's amazing to witness this. Oh, my gosh. 
That is a big piece of ice. Wow. So we're from Florida. We see palm trees every day. <laughs> so this is such a treat for us to come here and, and see this. It's flowing all around us. The Alaskan summer is the annual calving season when the glacier edge breaks into the sea. Captain Tuvo can only hope his passengers will be lucky enough to see it happen. Sometimes the big pieces look like they fall on slow motion. Sound, the splashing. You should see the old, the old picture. This view is absolutely spectacular. A once in a lifetime opportunity. People save up for many years to come here for a bucket list cruise. And then this is what you get to see. Did it fall? Oh! Oh, wow, it just kept! Beautiful. That was a big carving. So that's, I'm really pleased. Made my day. Booyah! You see, that's where it goes. Next time. Captain Tuvo takes Star Princess to a remote national park, but bad weather could scupper the trip. The wind is my worst enemy. Hotel General Manager Peter whips up an engagement ceremony. Why don't we do it in here? But loses the happy couple. And new cruise director JC has a big act to follow. So I've got to come up with something good and something fast. <laughs>